Google Maps, Waze, and Apple Maps. Most of the comparisons I came across took place in the US, UK, and Canada, which don't represent the experience people get on the other side of the world. I live in the UE, and I'm sure my experience will match those who live in other countries, so let's find out how the most popular navigation apps stack against each other from a different perspective. Right off the bat, Waze doesn't support public transportation, so it won't be included in this comparison, and I will start with the driving experience. So let's take a look at one of the examples to see how each app guided me to get from point A to point B. All of them gave me the estimated time, the distance, the street name, and the next turn. So far, it's a draw, but when you look beyond the basic info, you will find that Waze crushes the competition in a lot of areas. First, it's the only one that has the lane assist feature. In this scenario, it's precisely showing me the lane I need to follow to successfully make it to the next turn. This feature alone makes the navigation way less confusing, especially in a country like the UE, where one wrong exit can add from 10 to 30 minutes extra on my route, which is very frustrating. So one point only to Waze for such an amazing feature. But this only scratches the surface. Waze is heavily relying on crowdsourcing to enhance the navigation experience even further, unlike Google and the Apple Maps that barely use it. So let's take a look at what's possible on Waze, but not the competition. Looking at the bottom left corner, only Google Maps and Waze do have a speedometer, so one point each, but knowing your speed limit is what really matters. Thanks to the crowdsourcing, Waze is the only app that shows the speed traps directly on the map with visual alerts to help you avoid getting a costly fine, so one point for this. Secondly, it reliably knows the legal speed regardless it's a highway, a street, a bridge, or even a brick road. And the speedometer gives you an idea on how close you are to the limit and it turns into red once the limit is reached, so one more point only to wait. When it comes to Apple Maps, I found a toggle to show the speed limit, but unfortunately it doesn't work where I live. And I'm not sure how reliable is it when compared to Waze, which is always accurate at least for me. So I will not be able to give a point to Apple Maps, same as Google Maps that doesn't have this feature. Moving to reporting incidents, Apple Maps has the option to do so, same as Waze, but there are fundamental differences between the two. First, Waze gives me much more options to choose from. Secondly, it's way more popular than Apple Maps, and that's why when I check the same route on both apps, I see important updates on Waze that Apple Maps lack. So one and a half point to Waze versus only one point to Apple, while Google Maps doesn't give me the option to report anything, at least where I live. I also wanted to compare the voice guided navigation between all three, so let's take a listen. Continue on E11 for one kilometer. In 400 meters, use the second lane from the right to exit to in direction of Rashidea. Keep right toward Rashidea and Cornish, then keep left toward Rashidea and Cornish. Google and Apple did pretty much the same thing, so one point each, but Waze went the extra mile and mentioned the actual lanes to follow, which is more useful, so it takes one and a half point instead. So these are the differences that have a direct impact on my navigation experience, but we still have some quality of life features to talk about, like saving the parking location, which is available on all three, so one point each, and the same applies to adding stops along the route. But only on Waze I have the ability to check the change in the estimated navigation time up to one week ahead by tapping on this graph, choose the day, and scroll through the timeline, so one point only to Waze. The only feature that Waze lacks is the offline maps download, which is something you can do on Apple and Google Maps, so one point to both. Last but not least, choosing your engine type is a handy feature that makes it easier to add fuel or charging stops to your route, but each app has its own implementation. Starting with Apple Maps, it's kinda useless in this matter as the feature only works on select vehicles in select areas, and you won't find anything related under settings if both conditions are not met, so it doesn't get any points in my case. In contrast, Google Maps gives the option to choose between five different engines, and for electric vehicles, you can choose the plug type to make sure the search results are specific to your vehicle, plus it shows the charging speed, so one point to Google Maps. When it comes to ways, you get even more. For normal vehicles, you can choose your preferred gas type, so the results are even more specific, plus it shows the price per liter on the map, which is very useful. And if you own an EV, you can choose the plug type, same as Google Maps, in addition to the ability to choose the charging networks you are interested in, so one and a half point to Waze. So that's it when it comes to the navigation, and with no doubt Waze is the clear winner with 15.5 points versus 10 and 9 points to Google Maps and Apple Maps respectively. Now let's move on to the next category, which is exploring. We all use the maps to look for new things to do, 
check other people's experiences, and plan our future trips. So let's take restaurants as an example for exploring nearby places. All three offer the same functionality with a map view at the top and the list view at the bottom. But when you dig deeper, you will see an important difference. Only Google Maps and Waze show the ratings directly on the map, which makes it easier to pick highly rated options, while on Apple Maps you have to go through the list to find the available ratings. So I will give one and a half point to Google Maps and Waze versus only one point to Apple. Looking at the results, I found ways to be the worst. It doesn't only have the shortest list that misses a lot of options, but weirdly enough, it shows grocery stores and gas stations which are not relevant. In contrast, Apple and Google Maps show similar results with the edge goes to Google Maps for offering much more options. So I will give one point to Waze for being third, one and a quarter a point to Apple Maps for being second, and one and a half point to Google Maps as it comes first. Moving to the filters, only Google and Apple Maps have this functionality. On Apple, you can only filter by type or sort by distance and best match, while Google Maps have more options. You can either sort by distance or relevance, same as Apple, but with more filters like the price per person, the rating, or working hours. So one and a half point to Google versus only one point to Apple. But let's take a closer look at the ratings and reviews. Both Google Maps and Waze fetch their data from Google Search, unlike Apple Maps that utilizes other sources, in this case TripAdvisor. So most of the time, Apple Maps has no ratings or the number is very low, which is hard to rely on. But let's take some of the best examples on each app to compare the experience. You will see here that Waze doesn't give the option to read any reviews, but all you get is just a number. Apple Maps, on the other hand, does show some of the reviews directly in the app, but if you want to know more, you have to visit the source website, which is a cluttered experience, while Google Maps takes it to a whole new level. You're not only able to read all the reviews directly in the app, but you can also apply any of the automatically generated filters, search for specific words, sort by, and give feedback. So Google Maps is definitely the winner with one and a half point, and I will call it a draw between the other two with one point each for lagging behind in certain areas. Google Maps also has a very useful feature, which is the ability to check the popular times throughout the week with live updates to easily pick the best timing to visit, so one point only to Google Maps. Checking photos is another important aspect to explore new places. When you look at Waze and Apple Maps, you will see a limited number of options or no photos at all. In contrast, Google Maps has tons of photos and videos for almost all places that are categorized for easier exploring, like the menu photos, the videos, food and drink, or street view and 360. So one and a half point to Google versus only one point to Waze and Apple Maps. As far as we talk about exploring new places, it's great to have the option to create custom lists to visit these places later, which is something you can only do on Google and Apple Maps. With Apple Maps, you can create a new guide, give it a name, and start adding places, which is very basic, while with Google Maps, you can do much more. First, you can give it an emoji, which will make it easier to identify these places later on the map, then give it a name and a description. You can either make your list private for personal use, or convert it into a collaborative list, and invite friends or family members to join. Each person in the list will get the ability to add new places, get notified about the new additions, react to the available options, and put custom notes on each item. So that gives one and a half point to Google Maps versus only one point to Apple. There are even more features to help you explore things around you. In Google Maps, you can use Lens to explore the storefronts using the camera. Apple Maps has a similar feature called Look Around, but unfortunately, it's only available in a limited number of countries, which my current location is not one of them. And Waze doesn't have this feature, so only one point to Google Maps. And lastly, on Google Maps, you get the timeline feature. Sometimes you visit places that you completely forgot about, so if you are happy to give access to Google to save your location history, you will be able to get back in time to check the places you visited, get useful insights about your previous activities, the trips you had, the cities you visited, and more. So one point to Google Maps for having this feature. So in this category, it's a clear win for Google Maps for having much more features and information. Apple Maps comes second with almost half the score, and Waze is far from ideal when it comes to exploring new places. And the last category I have in this comparison is the UI and UX. Starting with the navigation, I personally prefer Waze for having thicker lines, which makes it easier to see the turns and exits, especially in areas with multiple intersections. 
I also prefer how Waze and the Apple Maps precisely follow the direction of my car, while Google Maps moves too much and keeps adjusting itself all the time, which is confusing. On the other hand, Google Maps is the best when it comes to interacting with the app. For example, I can start my navigation with one tap. On Apple Maps, it requires two taps, and in Waze, it takes three taps, which is too much. Similarly, I can end my navigation with one tap on Google Maps versus two taps on Waze and the Apple Maps. So these are the most important differences, but other than this, the differences are minor and don't have a massive impact on the overall experience. So I'm not going to declare a winner in this category as each app has its own pros and cons and leave it to your own judgment which one works the best for you. So these are all the points I wanted to talk about and here's my final conclusion. If you want to get the best navigation experience, especially if you own a car, Waze is certainly the way to go for the much more information and useful features it offers thanks to the crowdsourcing capabilities. Even though Google Maps is the oldest across the bunch, but it couldn't compete with Waze in this matter. In contrast, when it comes to exploring new places, Google Maps dominates the market and the second best option is not even close. When it comes to Apple Maps outside US and Canada, it's hard to recommend for anything due to the lack of features and info that will take Apple a very long time to catch up. So that's pretty much it for today. That was my comparison between Google Maps, Apple Maps, and Waze. So please let me know in the comments what do you think. But for now, thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video.